Welcome to Reverse Engineering News. I'm your host, Hash. Thanks for joining. This week, I have two items for you. One, a reverse engineering project, and the second, a cool tool. Now on the project, Aaron Christoffel has been reverse engineering Disney wristbands, the kind they give you when you go into the park. In that wristband is a unknown microcontroller that handles some RF communication so that they can tell who you are when you're walking around, what your name is, other things like that. So when you're on rides, they can do spooky things like say your name and scare the crap out of you. Now, the real cool thing is the chip that's inside there, there's no data sheet for it. It's an NRF31512 microcontroller. You can search for it right now. I'll wait for you. Yeah, you didn't find anything. There's like a Reddit post from five years ago where a guy was trying to find a data sheet and a Stack Exchange post where another person was trying to find a data sheet, but nothing shows up. What Aaron did that's really cool is he found another part in the same family. Now, what does that mean? When they make microcontrollers, when different companies make parts, they make them in what's called a family. So it might have the same processor core. It has different peripherals, wireless communication, maybe at different frequencies. And they have them, they kind of put all the parts together like Legos. And so you can pick a different part based on what you need. The core of it is all the same across the families. And so if you find other chips that have a similar pinout, it could carry across. And that's exactly what Aaron did. He found another NRF chip that was close, that was on the circuit board of a presentation clicker. And on that board, there were silkscreen comments, little, little markings next to test points that said what those pins did. And so after looking at that, he was able to translate that to his board on the Disney wristband and connect to it. And so that was just the first challenge though. Once he connected to it, he wanted to dump the firmware. And so his technique of dumping the firmware was to glitch the processor, to glitch the voltage line. I have other videos that I've talked about, you've seen on this channel, where I show using a chip whisper to glitch a part using a tool I wrote called Glitchy. Now there's a lot of ways to glitch a part. What chip whisper does is wrap all of the stuff you need into one nice tool. What Aaron did that's really cool that he explains is he built all those separate components. So he has a FET for cutting the voltage. He has a processor that he wrote some code in that's controlling all of it. He has a separate uh, board that's measuring the current draw of the processor. Measuring the current draw is important because you want to see what the chip is doing. You can actually see the transistors turning on and off if you look closely at the power utilization. So he has all those separate parts he put together, he built a glitching mechanism, and he was able to dump the firmware. Now he hasn't done anything to look at the RF side, and that's what the second story I have is about. It's using a tool called IQ Engine, written by Dr. Mark Lickman. He's the same gentleman who created PiSDR.org, which is an awesome digital signal processing and software defined radio website if you're interested in learning anything about that. All the stuff I did with smart meters and building flow graphs and GNU radio, the, the core learning that I had to do, I use sites like PySDR. It's got great visualizations. It's not heavy on math. It really is focused on you understanding software defined radio. Now, IQ Engine is a really cool visualization tool that Mark has written along with some other people. It's open source and it lets you view things like data captures from software defined radio inside this tool and it's all web based. So you don't have to install any software. Nobody has to have, have anything figured out uh, on how to make that work. You can load it all up in there. They're adding a bunch of functionality all the time, cool features, the ability to do processing inside there and it's all done locally on your computer. So it's not done cloud side for processing or anything like that. If you have tools that you think I should review or interesting uh, reverse engineering projects, please send them over. Hash at richesum.com or comment below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.